How's it going everybody? My name is Jesse. Welcome back to Continues to Tick, the YouTube channel where we focus on the future, we focus on time, and just how beautiful time is and how easily we just watch it go by. That's why my channel name is called Continues to Tick. It's just a reference to a clock ticking all day long on the wall, whether we realize it or not, whether we get up out of bed or not, the day's going to continue to go by. It's going to pass us by. So for me, I always try my best to think of time, think of the future, try my best to stay course and, and be ahead of time. I don't want to be behind time and feel like I should have done something yesterday when today is a perfectly great day to start. Today affects my tomorrow. Yesterday technically affects my today and the cycle, it just kind of continues like that. In this particular series, I'm growing a dividend growth portfolio. I'm documenting my journey, you know, the ups and downs, any mistakes I make along the way. So far, I've just been staying course. I've selected some companies. I've been funding money into this portfolio. It's all happening automatically. I haven't made any major tweaks since I've started this channel, and I'm just letting it ride. But don't get me wrong. I definitely look at my portfolio multiple times a day, and I take a look at you know what my money's doing, even though it's more of a backseat, you know, set it and forget it style of investing. And part of that is why I enjoy it. It is quite boring. And I'll get into that a little bit more as it's one of the topics in this week's video. Before we start going into that route and then into the dividend portfolio, I just want to give a little shout out to the subscribers. You know, I, I noticed that the subscriber count is increasing, which is pretty cool. We were at zero subscribers when we started. We're at nine now. Everything counts. So that's pretty cool. A little trickle effect. I really enjoy making these videos every week. I, I mainly primarily just do it for myself. It's just my way of documenting my journey of trying to reach financial freedom. In this particular series, we're just focusing on the dividend growth portfolio and just watching it systematically increase over time, seeing anything that I can learn for myself in the past and just documenting it. As for myself, maybe other individuals can learn from me as well as I'm documenting this journey. But for those new subscribers and, or anybody new watching these videos, definitely welcome, definitely welcome. Similar to other videos, these are some of the topics I'm going to talk about before we get into the portfolio review for the week. Um, like I said, I do want to talk a little bit about the motion to the dividend growth investing strategy, you know, compared to other strategies. And I also want to just give a little update on the PS5. So anyone who's been watching this channel for a while, you know, I've been trying to get a PS5 just like everybody else. So I got some good news. So let's dive right in. So as for the PS5 update, anybody who's been watching my channel for a while, I've made videos about it. You know I'm trying to get a PS5. A lot of people are trying to get a PS5. I definitely attempted on the pre-order, you know, the dates that were set for the pre-order. The sites crashed. It was a complete mess and it just didn't happen. I ended up getting some other goodies that day, but as far as coming out with the PS5 pre-order, just no way. It just did not happen. But on November 12th, the actual day of the PS5 release, Walmart, they actually had some other couple times, you know, for people to, you know, attempt to order a PS5 now, no longer pre-order. They had four separate times. I struck out on three of them, you know, with the help of my girlfriend, we just struck out. But at the one at 6 p.m., I was out of work. I was able to help, or I guess my girlfriend helped me, but we had computers open, phones open, iPads open, a couple tabs open, but we were able to actually get the PS5 ordered. I went on Twitter afterwards and a lot of people were not able to get it. I don't know how I was able to get it. Maybe it's just for me learning from the pre-orders or just having so many tabs open on different electronics. But we walked out, I walked out, however you want to put it, with a PS5 ordered. And it will be arriving November 25th. So I'm excited. Getting, I'm not a huge gamer like that. I don't need to play it on the actual day of release. But now that I'm working, now that I have a good stream of income coming in, a good stable career, job, I've always been wanting to get a PS5 or just any console for that matter right when it comes out. I've never been able to do it. It's more of like a sentimental thing for me. I primarily wanted a pre-order, but pre-orders are almost impossible to get is what I'm noticing, what I noticed this year. So just being able to order one right when it comes out, that's good enough for me. So I can almost just, you know, check this off the list as a thing that I've always wanted to do. It's a little splurge of money, of course. Sure, that money could have gone somewhere else and benefited, you know, better, but the time I'm gonna enjoy playing the PS5 is definitely gonna be enjoyed. So, you know, it comes with the saying, time that you enjoy wasting, is it really wasted time? Well, it just depends on everybody, but here's a little video, a little bit more about the PS5 
and some other goodies that I got. So check it out. Yo, how's it going? So as an update for the PS5, this past week, Best Buy, you know, they shipped out everything that I had initially bought when I failed to pre-order the PS5 and they shipped it out, it arrived this week. If you watched any of my previous videos, I've been trying to get the PS5 for the longest time. On the day I missed out on the pre-order, I ended up, you know, getting some other goodies in anticipation of being able to get the PS5. So this is the charging station that I got. Here's the NBA 2K21 Mamba Edition. And it came with the steel case cover here, which is really dope. You know, rest in peace, Kobe. He and I actually share the same birthday. And then I got an extra controller. I actually took it out the box. It's pretty freaking cool. Here, I'll show you guys. So here we are. We got, you know, both items out the box. And this controller, it feels so good. It's not even on, but I imagine when it's on, I heard there's some sensitivity in the, in the triggers. So it like adapts based on the game. Look at that. And it's, it's a good size. I mean, I got pretty big hands. And, you know, the last console I had was the PS3. So I totally skipped out on the PS4. But, one of the, you know, one of the reasons why I really like the Xbox, you know, the Xbox consoles is because their controllers were bigger. You know, they felt, you know, heavy, heavier duty. And they just kind of conformed to my hands a little better just because my hands are, you know, they're pretty big. But this this is beast. I don't know if you've seen the pictures. I'll probably put a picture on the screen. But... On the back, you feel a little bit of texture, and the texture is actually uh, made up of the symbols, you know, on the pad here of the triangle, the square, the X, the circle. So it's really cool the attention to detail. And then here's the charging station. You know, you connect it to the piece here on the back. You could put two here simultaneously as they're charging. So, you know, it kind of like clicks in. There you go. Just like that. So you kind of just have that sitting there and then the other one on the back charging so i just wanted to give you guys an update just because on some of my videos i was talking about the ps5 got the controller got the game got the charging station and most importantly we got a ps5 it should be arriving on november 25th so pretty cool pretty cool and then as for topic number two how or why you know my emotion doesn't change with dividend growth investing strategy the dgi strategy like i was saying in the beginning of the video i like the boringness of the dgi strategy it's what really attracted me to it this last week was a great week in the market i felt great you know when i see you know when i see green it just makes me feel better for the day automatically and i'm sure the same thing happens when i see red it's like in contrary of that when i see red and it's a down day you would think that it would make me feel bad it really doesn't anymore. It really doesn't affect me very much anymore. It used to when I was playing with Bitcoin, playing with some penny stocks, playing with Tesla. It, you know, the red days, the green days, they affect you differently, or they at least would affect me differently than now when I'm more focused on the DGI strategy itself. Because when you're playing with Bitcoin, when you're playing with, you know, Tesla, and I'd say playing it in bad terms, but let me just rephrase that. When you're investing with you know these strategies there's gonna be a lot more fluctuation in mood at least for me there was and it might just be me so let me just talk about me so when I was investing in Bitcoin or Tesla or other growth you know style you know companies or investment strategies when there was big green days there would be huge green days with huge green days comes big red days my emotion would be up down up down it would be a little less stable and that's great, but after a while, I just I just couldn't see myself doing that for the long term. I couldn't see myself doing it for the long haul. That with watching YouTube and, and seeing other investors on YouTube and, and just learning of financial education, I really kind of honed in on the things that I was looking for with my investing strategy, thinking long term, thinking about the future, thinking about time, all things that I'm fascinated of. You know, planting seeds, seeing it grow, seeing that time. It really attracted me to the to the DGI strategy, the dividend growth investing strategy, the boringness of it, because I can handle the boringness because for me personally, I'm fascinated with time. I like time. I like having time on my side. I also like thinking of the future. So you combine both of those things together. It's almost like I can envision myself where I'll be in the future just because I always think about it, think about myself being there, because as long as I can envision myself in the future, and how to get there, I know I'll get there as long as my systematic plan is in place, as long as I stay disciplined and stay the course, I know I'll get there. 
because regardless of whether I like it or not, time will continue to pass. That's the thing I can't control, but I can control what I think about and how I envision myself in the future because in order to do that, I have to set little goals for myself to eventually get to the main goal or to a goal in the future, if that makes sense. But this last week, like I'm saying, it was a great week. We now have a direction, somewhat of a direction, of who's going to be our next president, even though some people can say it's up for debate. We also had some great news. Some people may say it's fluff news, but it's good news that came out of Pfizer. You know, talking about a vaccine that's 90% effective. You know, that's a big deal. That's big news. So this last Monday, when the markets opened, they reacted. They went big. <laughs> you know, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. And I benefited from it this week. And my overall portfolio definitely benefited from it, especially as I hold Pfizer too. But I like being even keel. I like being a little bit, you know, behind, you know, backstage, behind the scenes, a little bit more mellow. I don't, I'm not a really big fan of the really high highs and the really low lows or even just highs and lows. I like being steady. I like being consistent. I like being systematic. I like being boring. And dividend growth investing strategy, it, it's, it's boring, you know, whether, whether we want to admit it or not. I, I, don't, I personally don't think it's boring. I just label it as a boring way of investing because it somewhat is. But for me, I'm excited about it. I really enjoy looking at my portfolio a lot, even though I literally don't make anything different. Like I don't make any changes at all, even though I literally make no changes and have made no changes to my portfolio since I started this channel. $500 a week every Thursday is what I invest. Set up the automatic you know, deposit and the automatic reinvest, automatic buys on M1 Finance. And it does it all for me. So with all that being said, hopefully some of that made sense. It made somewhat sense to me, <laughs> but hopefully it made some sense. Let's go ahead and dive into the portfolio review this week. So here we are on the Jesse's cash flow portfolio. Like I was saying in the beginning of the video, we're pretty close to the $10,000 size portfolio right now. We started this portfolio on July 20th of 2020, you know, earlier this year. It was quite a bit of an interesting time to start a portfolio. It was kind of after the whole COVID market, you know, quote unquote crash, rebounding, heading into a presidential election, you know, on lockdown, things like that. So it was a pretty weird time. And even with that being said, we are currently up, you know, 15% return, $720 gain. So we normally haven't been seeing it, you know, so far in this documentation of this portfolio. But we're actually starting to see a little bit or at least a momentary, you know, light of a growth growth in this dividend growth portfolio. So it's really interesting to see. We are really close to the ten thousand dollar mark. So we may hit it earlier than than I anticipated, which was January of 2021. Technically, we may even hit it next week. We'll have to see how the markets continue, but we may get it. We may get it before January. So just to show you here also. The day, you know, that was Friday yesterday. For the week, we're in the green. Month, we're in the green. My portfolio hasn't even been a year old, but all time, 15.6%. So pretty good. Pretty good, I would say. No complaints for me. And like I continually say, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. But if you're interested in any of the stocks that I'm holding, you know, any of the individual stocks, this is the breakup by, you know, sector and allocated, you know, percentages. But if you're curious of what actual stocks I'm holding, in the description box below, I have the link to sharing my pie. You go ahead and just click on that. It'll show you everything that I'm holding and in each sector. So take a look at that if you're curious. I just always want to share that. I don't like diving into individual stocks. I'm not a financial advisor or planner, so I, I, I kind of stray away from that. As far as the week, some of the activity, this week was kind of slow, but you're going to have that. The snowball action is what we noticed in last week. This week, not so much, but even with that being said, some weeks are going to be good dividend weeks. Some days are going to be good growth weeks. This last week wasn't a great dividend week, but the overall market was green. It was roaring. Our portfolio increased in size, and it's notable. But as you can see here, November 12th, we got a dividend payout from Apple. Thursday was the 12th, so I invested the $500 automatically. So here on Friday, November 13th, got paid by General Dynamics Core, 59 cents, and then, oh, realty income, $1.05. So. so here we are, $9,900, approaching the $10,000 portfolio size, which would be awesome. If that happens to be the case, as soon as we cross it, I'll kind of show you through the little app that I'm using, 
how much this portfolio is providing in you know monthly income annual income and like the dividend yield of the portfolio so we'll go into a little bit more of those details I'll share a little bit more into that you know once we get to that ten thousand dollar mark because that's a pretty good milestone to hit it's a nice time to kind of start looking at statistics and potential tweaking of the portfolio but as for right now no tweaking necessary I've just been staying the course staying disciplined staying systematic and so far we're seeing some growth we're seeing some dividends and the journey is going to continue the documentation of this series is going to continue I really enjoy making these videos really enjoy sharing this with you guys but that's going to be it for this week's video I'm going to wrap it up here today's Saturday tomorrow Sunday enjoy your weekend and I'll see you guys on the next one peace